of you guys have seen me using these AC Unity 30 round windowed AK polymer magazines in video. And in the comments section, a lot of you guys are talking about the magazines, asking me about the quality of them, and even people saying that there are reports on AK files and other places that they're frail and easily broken. I brought out today a couple of test samples. I also have XTech, and these are new magazines as well, relatively speaking. They've been out for a little while, but these are made here in the USA. These are from the ashes of the old US Palm magazines, but don't confuse them with the US Palm magazines. These have been re-engineered. They are user serviceable. They have steel reinforcements front and rear. They also have steel reinforced feed lips from what they say on their website. Looking at the feed lips, I cannot see the reinforcements, but then my old eyes are failing me. Actually, I do see steel in there. So just inside the feed lips, I can see a little bit of steel. These things, again, are manufactured in the United States. They claim that they've tried them in every AK they can get their hands on. If you're a US Palm user, you'll know that the US Palm magazines didn't work in all AKs. These are manufactured in Bosnia. They claim that they're using some sort of space age German polymer in the manufacturing. They're claimed to be used by Bosnian defense forces as well as other European nations. So these are actually military issued magazines. These to my knowledge are not. You'll notice that there is a sizable difference between the two magazines. This, the X-Tech is quite a bit thicker and the AC Unity is quite a bit more narrow. Now, both of these magazines feature something that I didn't really care for initially, but have really come to appreciate, and that is a steel reinforced bolt hold open on the last round on the followers of both magazines. The AC Unity does not have steel reinforced feed lips. However, it does have steel reinforced locking points front and rear. These retail for $29. These, depending on what you get, retail for as little as $9. Now, I have the windowed 30-round magazine here, and I paid $13 for these. You can get the non-windowed version for right around uh, 8 bucks to 11 bucks, depending on where you shop. These are also available for AK-74s, 7.62 by 39, 545 by 39. They have 30-rounders, 40-rounders, and they even have a quad stack 7.62 by 39 version of this magazine. I have read lots of reports of those having issues. Uh, Recoil Magazine, Ian from Recoil did a tour of the factory uh, on Recoil Web. You might want to check that out if you want to learn more about the manufacturing of these AC Unity magazines. So why are we out here today? We're out here today to torture test these to find out if the feed lips are in fact prone to breaking on the AC Unities. And the x -Techs, I've had for a while, I had some prototypes, some early ones. Now, I've purchased these magazines. I have no dog in the fight. Um, this, is, this represents $60 in magazines I'm about to destroy, maybe. And I have 13 bucks each in these. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some destructive testing, if you will, of sorts, and just kind of be hard on these magazines and see how they perform. Just so you guys know that we're not going to play any tricks here, we're going to use two magazines. I really don't want to tie up any more money in this test. If I can get the cap off the spray paint here, do it the old-fashioned way, a little bit of force. I'm just going to put a dab of paint on the bottoms of our test magazines, all right? And we'll go from there. So these are going to be the only four magazines we're going to use in the testing. Should one of these magazines fail, we'll continue with the testing of the remaining magazine. All right, so we have 10 rounds of Tula ammunition loaded into each magazine. We're just going to do a quick function check. These are brand new mags. Do a quick function check of each to make sure that they're going to work. This is just a Battlefield pickup Petronoff rifle that I have. I brought it out because I honestly don't care if I scratch it because it's a Battlefield pickup. <laughs> and we're not really shooting for groups. And I know the sights are off on this rifle, but let's see what we get. All right, locked open just like it should. I'm doing the Kentucky windage thing, and we'll talk more about the hold open follower on each. That was our first X-Tech. This is our second.
All right, 10 rounds locked open as it should. I'll switch over to our Unities, AC Unity magazines. Locked open like it should. All right, didn't feed. Make sure the magazine's locked. We saw that earlier. Hopefully it's not the Petronov doing that. And it locked open. Let's see if that continues. All right, so let's get started with our testing of these four magazines. So when we were testing the rifle before we started videotaping this morning, we noticed that one of the AC Unity magazines failed to pick up a round. And then in the intro of the video, we noticed an AC Unity magazine failed to pick up a round. So now we're gonna to try to identify the problem magazine. If we find the problem magazine, here are two test magazines that are spray painted. All right, we do have some Federal out here as well today. And it, it happened with the Federal when we start off this morning, but then again, it happened with the Tula in the opening of the video. So these are two test magazines. If it continues to do that with this Petronoff rifle, while the X-Techs are working, we're gonna give a ding to the AC Unities and replace it with another one that we have out here today that's not spray painted. I will spray paint this one if I have to replace it. So let's do a quick check here. Okay, we have identified the problem magazine. It's consistently doing it. Click no bang, pull the bolt back, it chambered the round. Now, it very well could be that perhaps this Petronoff is under gassed. It certainly doesn't feel like it, but that could be the case. But we're gonna take this magazine out of the mix and we're gonna give AC Unity one ding already. Rifle definitely isn't under gassed. All right, this magazine, is out of the mix. And our replacement magazine, I'm gonna go ahead and mark. All right, so there's our replacement. All right, guys, as things normally go for us here at the Military Arms Channel, I can break anything. My Petronov has never given me any issues with steel magazines. And my AC Unity magazines have never given me problems with my definitive arms rifle that I used in another video or any of my other AKs like the Vepr that I have out here now. But even our second AC Unity magazine would not work, is actually worse than the other one in the Petronov. So the Petronov is out of the picture and we're gonna use a Vepr. So let's make sure that the Vepr will work. Now here's our X'd out first Unity magazine that we thought was a problem. Okay, locked open just like it should. Here's the other one of the test Unity magazines. All right, works as it should. And then the third test Unity magazine, which I didn't want to do. All right. So the AC Unity magazines, that ding I gave it, we're taking that ding away. We're gonna use a quality rifle. Okay, we'll go back to using the originals. The big ugly X on it because there's nothing wrong with it when using it in the Vepr. We'll keep this one on standby just in case something happens. Our two X techs are here. So now let's start the testing. <laughs> we got a rifle that works. We're gonna go ahead and mark this tree at about chest height. Most magazines aren't get dropped from 15 feet in the air. You're gonna drop them from a reload or from the shouldered position out of a rifle. So we're gonna mark it right about here, which is chest height for me, which is pretty high for other people considering I'm almost six foot five. So that's where we're gonna drop them from. All right, so if you take a look down here, we are just gonna do this test to one magazine each until one of them fails and we'll replace it with one of the other marked magazines. 
we have limited resources and ammo. Tula, nobody gives me this ammo. Nobody's giving these magazines to me. I'm having to pay for all this. So we're gonna to try to do this testing as uh, cost effectively as possible. We're gonna drop them first just onto the ground and then we have a steel plate. We're gonna drop them on from the same height. Both magazines are currently loaded to capacity, which is 30 rounds. We'll take the X-Tech, we'll put the feed lips at that height, and we're just gonna drop it but first onto the ground to see if anything happens like it ejects rounds from the magazine. Here we go. All right, one round moves slightly forward, not a big deal. All right, see if we can get that round seated back. Chest tight, drop one more time on the butt. And once again, the top round works its way out but does not come out of the magazine, but it would make hard for a reload. All right, we'll set that one aside. The AC Unity, the one that we had originally thought was bad, which works fine in the Vepper, we will drop from the same height, but first, 30 rounds loaded. That top round just barely moves out, not very much at all. Okay. Seat it back. One more time. And once again, that top round moves out, but not as much as it does on the X-Tech, but still no, it's pretty much flush with the front of the magazine. You could probably get that into a rifle. Not bad. Okay, so now let's drop them onto the ground rounds first. Start off with our X-Tech. And 30 rounds loaded, chest height, rounds first. Yeah, I mean, that's not doing anything, guys. That's definitely not going to break anything. Do it one more time. and no physical signs of damage. The ground's pretty soft. All right, Let's switch that out. Gotta have an open pocket around here somewhere. All right, now you do have that bottom round on the AC Unity mag trying to walk forward that second round of the magazine. See that? It's not holding that round tightly at all. Push down, see if it's a reset, okay. So that drop kind of caused the rounds to bind up, would seem, even though there were no physical defects. From just dropping it on the butt, it seems like the spring got kind of screwed up or the rounds got screwed up in the stack because there was no spring pressure on that second round. But me pushing down, pushing back up, everything seems to be okay now. That round's not walking out. All right, so now we're going to drop this feed lips first, same height. No physical damage, not surprising. The round's not walking forward. One more drop. Again, no physical damage, and that, that second round isn't walking forward. All right. change this up a bit. Go with the AC Unity, 30 rounds loaded, chest height drop, butt first. Floor plate still locked into place just fine. Chewed up the magazine a little bit to be expected. No rounds ejected, no rounds forward. Everything seems to be okay. One more drop, chest height, butt first. It bounced. A little bit of marking on the polymer, nothing. Base plate still in place. No physical damage to the magazine. All right, X-Tech, you're up. X-Tech, 30 rounds. Chest height, but first steel plate. All right. Put a little flat spot there. Base plate still firmly in place. No damage really. Round walk forward a little bit. You didn't see that with the AC Unity, but no other physical damage. One more drop. Again, all it's doing is just flattening out that edge. I mean, that's nothing.
base plate staying in place. That round slightly walked forward, but that would load just fine. As you can see, it's not extending out past that front locking lug. All right, next test. Chest height onto the feed lips. Here we go. Drop one, X-Tech magazine, 30 rounds loaded. That hit favoring this feed lip when I dropped it. You can see where it hit. No rounds walked out. I don't see any physical damage to the feed lips. Just a mark. All right. Drop it again. I was trying to hold it like this, but you know what, guys? I'm just going to let gravity do its thing. Onto the feed lips. It seems it's favoring the back of the feed lip the way it falls because the way it's weighted, it wants to fall like this due to gravity. All right. Maybe if I hold it like this, something different would happen. Just a nick in the feed lip, nothing serious. No rounds walked out. No signs of physical damage. We'll go for four. I'll hold it mid magazine like this, see if things it changes how it impacts the steel plate. Definitely hit more square that time. Yeah, you can see how it hit more square. No physical damage that I can see. Rounds didn't walk forward. And one more drop just for posterity's sake. <laughs> Holding middle of the magazine. Good square hit. Again, you can see it's flattening out back here. A little bit of damage to the polymer. No cracks. No rounds walked out. Looks good. All right, four drops for the AC Unity on the feed lips. Then we're going to go test fire these magazines once we're done. Hold it from here, chest height, and go. Now that one dropped around out of the magazine. It hit more square. It seems like the center of gravity is a little bit different. It dropped around out. Don't see any physical damage to the feed lips, but it dropped around out. Okay, try it again. Holding top of the magazine, chest height, steel plate. Here we go. Wow, dropped a bunch of rounds out. All right, so we have one, two, three, four rounds out, one sticking out, and it cracked the magazine. This magazine is no longer serviceable took two drops on the steel plate to completely destroy this magazine. This magazine will not work. I don't think there's too much more to be said about the AC Unity magazines. I wish I hadn't bought so many of them. You can see the crack here. Now, some of you will say, well, you're dropping on steel. You don't walk on steel. If you drop it on asphalt, concrete, same thing. Any hard surface could produce the same results as what we've seen here. We just happen to have a steel plate handy. So that versus this, big difference. Big, big difference. The X-Tech is a tank. This is a range magazine. It's like the first gen polymer P-Mags not go to war tough. And that's a shame because it has steel locking lugs front and rear. Had they steel reinforced the feed lips, we would not have seen this type of failure. This magazine can no longer continue in testing, so we're going to go to one of the backup magazines. That's unfortunate. So the discussions that I've seen online seem to confirm that the AC Unity magazines do have a very pronounced failure point, and that would be the feed lips. It seems that everything else was working just fine. We we're dropping on the butt, things like that, working flawlessly, but because it does not have steel reinforced feed lips, it failed. This is a range magazine. So from this point forward, the AC Unity magazines aren't go to war. They are range mags, period. Now you can see very clearly it's metal bolt hold open here. We'll show you what it looks like on the X-Tech here once we empty the magazine that we did the testing on. We've replaced the broken, failed magazine with a new one. We already know that it's not going to pass drop tests on the feed lips. That's confirmed and that's all over the internet. We're going to just say that's a fact. 
They break when you drop them loaded on their feed lips, and they may break if you drop them when they're not loaded on their feed lips or partially loaded. So now we're gonna continue a different type of testing with a, a brand new AC Unity magazine that has not been through any of the drop tests. So we're gonna get this one out of the mix and we'll do different battery of tests on this magazine. However, our current champion, the X-Tech, we're gonna go ahead and see if it functions in the Vepper. This is the same magazine that, went, that was dropped on the butt and dropped on the feed lips four times. All right, here we go. Let's see if we got function. Locked in, charged. And locked open as designed. So the X-Tech definitely is a much more durable magazine. If you take a look at the follower, it's all polymer but the stop is right there on the very end. On the AC Unity, it comes further up into the follower. Now, if you push this down a little bit on the inside, I don't know if Jason could see it, we may have to get a still photo, but you can see the steel reinforcement on the inside of the feed lips. I can see it now, it's just barely right across the bottom there, and then it goes down inside the magazine. And you can kind of see the polymer welds that's holding those, those reinforcements in place. All right, very impressed with the, uh, the X-Tech. All right, let's see what else we can do to it. So the weapon is clear. Put it on safe. So, soldiers jumping out of the back of vehicles, things like that, it happens. When you jump out, you may hit your weapon on your way out. I have shown in previous videos that the first generation Magpul magazines without the steel reinforcements were fairly easy to snap off an AK simply by banging it on a wooden table. So what I'm gonna do now is start off with a fully loaded 30 round AC Unity magazine. I am not gonna load the weapon. And I'm gonna simulate jumping out of, a pick, or out of a truck and banging my weapon muzzle down on the back of that truck. Here we go, from about chest height. Now this is not scientific, but here goes the first test. One hit, you can see where I hit the table. We'll do a total of four. Here it goes, number two, second hit, third hit, fourth hit. All right, let's walk over and see if the weapon fires. All right. It fired, bolt locked open as it should. Now you can see with the AC Unity, the different style of bolt hold open that it has. Boy, if they just had steel reinforcements. Now, another thing I've noticed about the AC Unities, they're like Glock frames. You can see I can flex them very easily. Even up by the feed lips, I can easily, not the feed lips themselves, but I can, I can squish the whole magazine body. It's very, very thin polymer. The x -Techs, there's no way in the world unless you're Hulk Hogan, you're gonna squish that body and make it move where you can feel it move like you can with the AC Unities. All right, so we just got done testing the AC Unity magazine. We're gonna make sure the weapon's clear. It's on safe. Looking at the locking points, it doesn't seem like there's any type of damage to the heel or the toe. And this is where you'll typically see a failure. When I broke the early first gen magazine, uh, PMAG magazines that didn't have steel, that's, that's exactly where they broke right there. They snapped off right there. So AC Unity seems to be pretty durable in that regard. Now what I was talking about earlier about squishing the AC Unity mags, look how thick this thing is with the real thick ribbing. There is no way, this thing feels very, very rigid, much, much more durable in overall construction at the cost of thickness and weight. Now there's not gonna be a whole lot of weight because it's polymer, but it is a little bit thicker and it may not fit in certain pouches. You can see where it tapers down. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the same test with the X-Tech. Weapons empty, safety's on, 30 rounds loaded, magazines locked, we'll do four drops. All right, one, Two, three, 
four. All right, let's walk over, see if the weapon fires. All right, locks open just as it should. Everything seems to be just fine with the locking points. No cracks in the polymer. This magazine's good to go. So we've already seen what these magazines are capable of in terms of being dropped while loaded and being banged while loaded into a, a rifle as if you were jumping out of a vehicle. The magazines are both empty right now and what we're going to do is a simple drop test of a heavy item onto each of the magazines. What I'm trying to find out here is just how durable is the polymer of each of these magazines. First up is our current loser, the AC Unity. We're going to lay it on the ground, drop a brick on it from about chest height, and see if that did any physical damage to the magazine. Doesn't appear that there's any physical damage to the mag. We'll load it up and try it after this. Let's do another drop. All right, you can definitely see where it bit into the side there a little bit, but honestly, I can't say that I see any type of damage to the magazine. All right, AC Unity off to the side, x -Tech up. I do not have any doubt the x is gonna pass this test with fine colors, but I've been wrong before. Here we go. Took a big nick out of one of the ribbing pieces, but that's raised and not unexpected. Don't think it did any structural damage to it. One more drop. <laughs> the edge of the bricks are digging in, all right? Again, it's dinging up the ribbing, but no structural damage that I can see. All right, what the heck? Let's take the cushion out of it. X-Tech, steel plate bottom, <laughs> brick dropped from chest height. Here we go. Just dinging it up in the ribbing, but no structural damage that I can see. We'll do one more test, then we'll do the AC Unity. Now you're asking, well, what's this simulate? I don't know, a magazine laying on the ground and something heavy getting dropped on it. Here we go. Again, that's really biting in. I'm getting pretty accurate with my drops. Really took a big bite out of that uh, ribbing, but I don't see any structural damage to the magazine, just cosmetic. We'll find out, we'll load it up and shoot it. All right, AC Unity. Steel plate, brick drop, chest height. Took another little nick out of it, cosmetic. Seems like its flexibility allows it to just kind of rebound from the impact force. All right, we'll do one more drop. And that time we took a nick out of it and that went all the way through. Will that keep it from working? Definitely a hole in the magazine. I don't think it's gonna keep it from working. It's just cosmetic, but once again, this magazine is nowhere near as durable as the Ectech, based upon the testing we've done so far this afternoon. All right, guys, we've loaded up the two magazines after our brick drop test. And again, the only damage we see the AC Unity, it actually made a hole in the magazine, but it loaded 30 rounds just fine. So let's go ahead and see if the AC Unity works. Probably will. Locks in okay. Locked open just as it should. 
the X-Tech. A little burgered up looking, but I can tell you right now, this tank is most likely gonna work. All right, locking in, it's a bit weird. Nope, locked in, okay. Sometimes AKs can be a little finicky. All right, functions just fine. Bolt hold works just as it should. Well, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and say what I've already said. This is a range magazine, an alternative to P mags, if you will, about the same price. Would I put these into my go kit? Absolutely not. If the Bosnian military is using these, I feel sorry for them. This is not a magazine. I mean, I think I could probably actually break this thing. <laughs> I don't know if Jason can see just how much I'm flexing it. It's just, and this is windowed, maybe the non-windowed version would have done a little better. It certainly would have changed the outcome of the feed lips, but man, it almost feels like I can snap this thing on my knee. It just is not that durable. The X-Tech, I'll break my fingers trying to bend or flex this thing. There's just no way you're gonna get any movement out of this thing. It's tough as tanks. This thing is durable. So this is what you get. This magazine's about 20 bucks more than this magazine. But this magazine has a shelf life. This one, it's a go to war magazine. This thing's tough. For a polymer magazine, that's a darn tank. All right. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to see what I can do to break this thing. But if you don't want to stick around, guys, thanks for 11 years of support. If you'd like to support us in our effort to bring you information like this, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. Follow that link. And again, consider supporting us directly here at the Military Arms Channel because we do not take industry money from manufacturers of firearms, and in this case, an accessory. Everything you saw here this afternoon I purchased, and therefore we can be as unbiased as we possibly can. And please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Now let's, uh, let's get barbaric on this thing and see what it takes to actually break it. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. All right, so we got the X-Tech magazine setting on a steel plate on a brick, and I have this big ass heavy <laughs> log, and let's see how good my aim is. <laughs> it broke my brick. <laughs> it put a dent in the magazine, but this darn thing is far from broken. Look at that, gouged on both sides. It's just the ribbing. And that ribbing is what makes this thing so incredibly durable. It's one of the features that makes it so incredibly durable. That cracks me up. <laughs> Didn't even drop around. Let's see if it works. I mean, I, there's no reason it wouldn't. Yeah, you're a piece of junk. I just became an X-Tech believer. I've ignored these magazines for so long. Wow, what a tank. I ain't done yet. Jason came up with this test. Gonna put the magazine like this on the brick, try to drop this stump I'm sitting on straight down and see if we can crush the feed lip area of this magazine. Alrighty, here we go. <laughs> Took another bite. Oh! That did it. I knew we could break it. <laughs> Good call, Jason. <laughs> you figured out a way to break it. Well, now you can see the steel reinforcements on the feed lips. <laughs>